Welcome back everybody. After spraying this deck in my last episode, I was definitely hooked on the airbrushing. It didn't quite turn out how I wanted it to, but had a lot of fun doing it. So we're going to do it again in today's episode with way better results. Let's get to it. <laughs> I'm starting off here with some 600 grit sandpaper and a uh, red scotch pad is sort of an interface for backing pad so I don't finger sand it. And just going over that, normally I'd use the DA, but again, I'm at home, it's at work. Uh, so using a block here on the ends of the board just to sort of knock down uh, some of the clear that had built up along the edges. And I did run that along the sides too. Uh, here, giving it a quick blow off, quick hit with some Proform uh, wax and grease remover. And now I'm in my basement uh, masking away with that FBS fine line. Uh, this deck was a little different than the last one in that I actually had some time to uh, plan what I was going to do uh, in order to sort of stack my candies, uh, stack the layers so it looks like the board has more depth. So that's something I did on this board, uh, not the last one, and uh, really happy with how it turned out here. So I'm using the Tealicious uh, Candy 2.0 from Createx, and uh, this time I mixed it 1 to 1 with the 40-50 Balancing Clear. Uh, Maple Airbrush Supplies is where I got it, and they recommend doing it this way, and it worked awesome. Uh, definitely wasn't fighting me with the uh, color on this one, it was uh, turning out quite nice. Um, and as you can see, quite vivid, I didn't have to go over this multiple times to get the color I was shooting for. Um, here I am masking off the perimeter of that section, and I realized after I did this that I could have just done this to start with because I ended up masking off the whole second section anyway here. Um, and uh, the reason I did this is just so I'm not laying that candy over uh, the other areas where I'm going to lay actually a different color candy afterwards. And I'm just using a plastic bag here to dab that in just to give a little bit more effect. So by dabbing it in here, it gets nice and thick in some areas, and then I'll go over it with the airbrush after and just sort of darken up the whole thing. And I think my airbrush at this point was a little bit clogged because I wasn't getting a ton of um, ton of product coming out, as you can see by my little spray pattern at the bottom there. But uh, once I get going here, it does uh, clear up with the next couple colors and spray properly. With that first candy down, I'm going to go over all my edges with black here. Uh, the reason I did the candy first is that I found on my last board, uh, when I sprayed the candy over top of the black, it just sort of washed it out a little bit in the sun. So by doing the candy first and the black over top, I'm not going to get that wash out. The black's going to look a lot more crisp in the sunlight. And the first satisfying round of unmasking here, uh, always satisfying to see that tape come off. And, well, A, nothing peeling off underneath it, but uh, everything looking really good. Now I'm asking over all the areas we sprayed that teal candy over, so I can start going over it with the uh, ultraviolet here. One thing you didn't see on the time lapse there with my uh, uh, masking is that I'm linting all my tape, which means I'm peeling that off a long piece of tape, I'm sticking it to myself, to my jeans, to my uh, shirt, whatever I'm wearing really, I guess hoodie in the garage there. And what that's going to do is going to take some of the tackiness off the tape, so when I stick it down it's not going to uh, peel up the previous layers as easily anyway. Uh, luckily on this one it didn't have any peeling. Um, the only downfall of that is you do get some lint on there, and a little bit of dog fur in, in my case, but uh, honestly it turned out pretty well. So now I've peeled off that first layer of fine line inside the ultraviolet, and I'm going over it one more time. So that's going to darken up those first couple layers, and then add some color over the areas where I peeled that fine line. And there we go guys, uh, that was a lot more work than I expected, that was about four hours of spraying and masking tonight, uh, not counting the couple hours of masking I did last night to 
get my initial lines down. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, the, the light in here, or the camera anyway, definitely doesn't do that blue justice. I'm excited to get some clear on that. But for tonight, uh, that's where we're going to leave it. Here we are with three coats of Durafil C9500 clear on there. And man, do those candies pop. This board is beautiful. I'm super stoked on how this turned out. It does still need a cut and polish. I'll probably do that in another video, just sort of run through the polishing uh, supplies I use. But uh, for now, I'm extremely happy with that. Let's go have a look at it in the sun. Got a lucky uh, sunny winter day here in February in Alberta. It's beautiful out. And I'm trying not to catch my shadow here, but man, those candies look awesome. Definitely need to do this on a motorcycle or something. My only complaints on this board, uh, as far as things turning out not quite how I wanted them, uh, this middle stripe here came out a little darker than I wanted. I sprayed my candies a little too heavy, just uh, particularly right in here and then right in here. And that was just a uh, lack of experience there with the candies. I was spraying a little, little heavy coming in here and just sort of a little too much overlap in the middle. That's how it works with candies. The more you overlap them, the darker they get. But uh, that aside, I'm happy. blast spraying this deck guys and i think you'll agree it turned out pretty cool uh if you guys want to see more content like this be sure to hit that like and subscribe button i ordered some more paint the other day so i should be able to do some more projects like this in the near future thanks again for watching we'll see you next time